everyone, good afternoon. Um, it is very, very lovely to be here in front of you all today. Uh, I want to say thank you so very much uh, for making the time to be here. I, I know a lot of you um, have traveled from a really, really far away uh, to be here with us today. And, uh, and it's a real, you know, it's, a, it's very humbling that you guys do that uh, year in and year out to be here at these events with us. Um, and I'm gonna do my best um, to ensure, uh, along with a lot of our other amazing speakers, that the effort that you made to be here is worth it. So, before I begin, I wanted to take a second. Jess was just out here. So Jess and the team put a phenomenal amount of effort into putting this event together for all of us. The reason we can all experience this Moodle magic together is because they work so hard to create these events. Uh, and it's not just Jess and it's not just her team, it's a lot of people from Moodle HQ. So you might notice a lot of the Moodle HQ people have orange lanyards. If you see them around the place, uh, give them a high five, say thank you and appreciate them for the effort that they put in to allow us to spend this wonderful time together. So, uh, today's been really, really busy. Uh, we had the jams yesterday as well, and so I got to speak to a lot of people already. I think like at least a third of this room I feel like I've said hi to so far. Um, but maybe some of you don't know me, uh, so hi. <laughs> My name's Marie, and I am the global head of product at Moodle HQ. Uh, and so that you get to maybe know me a little bit, um, we're going to start with three things about me. So the first thing I just said, I, I am a product manager by trade and um, although actually Martin gave me a promotion this morning and called me the chief product officer and I'm keeping it. Uh, so <laughs> I'm changing my title officially. <laughs> um, so um, what does that mean? What, what, what is this whole product management thing and what does it mean to lead the product function at, at Moodle HQ? I'll, I'm giving you a little bit of an overview. Aha, uh -huh. okay. So, the Moodle HQ product team comprises of product managers, UX designers and researchers, DevOps specialists, software developers, integrators, and software testers, who together with our Moodle community developers build Moodle LMS, Moodle Workplace, our mobile app solutions, our Moodle cloud proposition, and we also provide support for our community through Moodle Academy, the Moodle community sites, and events like this one. So day to day, we do, or I do, product management. Basically, as a product practitioner, I, especially in the software development space, my job is to identify problems, real life problems that people have, and then build software solutions that helps those problems be fixed, that provides solutions to those problems. And Moodle products, we do this via a process of product discovery and then product delivery. So in product discovery, you start with a hypothesis, this assumption about what these problems might be. Uh, we, we source these problems from a multitude of different sources. It can be the Moodle tracker, our Moodle forums, uh, our product advisory groups, and multiple, multiple conversations with our customers, our users, our partners, and our service teams globally. And then once we've collected those problems, we do a little bit of research. We test it out, uh, we do surveys, and we have more conversations uh, to identify the problems that are worth spending time on, that the, they're real problems people really have and they really matter to them. And from there, we ideate. Uh, we work with our end users to co-design potential solutions to those problems that might help alleviate the problems that people have. And we do this all sorts of fun ways. This is kind of the fun part. You get to try things out, prototype. You get people try this and play with that and tell us what you think about this. Uh, and at the end, we get to a point where these ideas that we have start taking the shape of solutions that make sense. 
And then we move on to product delivery, um, which is often what people think about when they think about product teams. They kind of think you're, it's the bit where you build the software, but it's actually only half of the job. Uh, the bit about building the software, testing the software, rolling out the software, that's the half job. It is, though, a really, really hard half. And we have an amazing group of developers at Moodle HQ and in our community who are absolute champions at it. So our, pro our approach to product development is documented in something called the Moodle Product Playbook. And I'll touch on this a little bit later on because I want to share more about it with you later on. So product management is all about figuring out what the most valuable things you can build in our software are to help people get their jobs done and drive the outcomes that they want to achieve. Sounds easy, right? <laughs> well, not quite, especially not with something like Moodle it, because it serves so many different purposes and types of users. We serve students, learners, employees, trainees, HR reps, teachers, learning designers, system administrators, developers, corporations, governments, school, small businesses and large universities. Each person or organization type with its own unique set of problems to solve. What makes it even more complicated is that Moodle is at once a product, a platform, and a solution. What's that actually mean? Well, uh, for some people, Moodle is a product. It's just a piece of software. They access it on their computer or on their laptop. They do stuff with it. Hopefully, it's something that they find valuable. They don't really think about it too much. They need it to work. They need it to be easy. They need it to help get whatever it is that they're doing with Moodle done. Simples. For other people, Moodle is more like an operating system. Those people, they want to see it. They want to see the guts of it. They want to play, play with it. I'm looking at Tim. He's the perfect person on this, on this category. Um, they want to be able to build extensions and customizations to it. And, and actually, for very many people, and this is a, a real reality, people make money out of being able to do those things with Moodle. So it's a really important part of what we do. Um, whether it's a salary that they earn uh, because of their job and, and you know, they might work as a system administrator at a university or something, or it's actually the foundation for their businesses, which is the case for many of the partners that are here at the event. So for those people, Moodle is a platform. It needs to be flexible, adaptable, stable, and open. Now we're getting a bit more complicated. Importantly though, for everyone, Moodle is an essential part of how they get things done. It's a tool that they either have to use or want to use to drive outcomes, and specifically in our world, learning outcomes. So whether you're a student and you just want to get a passing grade, or you're an educator and you want to see a little glimmer of engagement in your student's eyes, um, you are a system administrator and you want to be able to provide a reliable learning solution for your organization, or an L&D rep who needs to make sure that their employees have the right training to keep them safe, all of those people need Moodle to be a solution. So we're really privileged, right? Moodle is super privileged to get to play this really important role, but such a wide range of roles in such a diverse ecosystem on a global scale, mind you, which adds to the complexity, but that's the problem. That diversity does add a lot of complexity. And without focus, sorry, that complexity can lead to a lack of focus. Uh, and that's why it's really, really important for us at Moodle HQ to have a clear vision for Moodle the product. Um, and that's what most of today's talk is going to be about. Now, before I get to that, I did say there was three things about me, and that was only the first one, and I'm only probably 12 minutes in, so I probably should hurry. <laughs> so, the next two. So second, I am a believer in the practice of servant leadership, and what that means is I see my team's ideas as much more valuable than my own and the people we serve as our first priority. Uh, so it's important at this stage that I take a second to say thank you and mention that what I'm talking about today, I didn't make it up. Um, it comes from 
many of you, many other passionate Moodlers who aren't here with us today, and the 200-ish people at Moodle HQ that I get to, to have the pleasure to work with every day. So I want to take a minute to say thank you. Thank you very much for that. Thank you to you. Thank you to them for the support in creating this. And then thirdly, I'm a dog mum, I'm an avid traveller, uh, and I'm a child of the 80s, so tonight's, uh, no, tomorrow night's party costumes will just take me back. <laughs> I have to say, I just realised that was actually six things about me, not three. And anyway, <laughs> okay. So, now, I think it might be worth taking a minute to talk about you. Um, what you might not realise, you are all part of the Moodle product team. You're all here, traveling from all over the world, because you want to make, help make Moodle a wonderful solution for the world. And that's why you're here, you know, you, you care about it. And on that, we are united. So we are all part of the same tribe. Uh, it is absolutely an honor to do this job with you all, and thank you for being part of the team. So that's a nice bit. The not so nice bit is it is guaranteed that there are parts of this Moodle product vision that you might not lack. It is not possible for us to create a vision for our product with such a wide ecosystem of stakeholders that's going to meet everyone's needs. We've had to make decisions as to what we're going to focus on and some of those choices might not have been the choices that you would have made and that's a reality. But for Moodle to stay successful for the next 10 to 20 years, we have to have a clear strategy, a successful strategy. And strategy is more often about what you choose to say no to than what you actually choose to pursue. But the good news is, again back to good news, Moodle is a community-led project. So you all have the opportunity to help shape the future of Moodle with us. And at the end of this presentation, I'm going to be giving you guys some real takeaways, some stuff you actually can go away and do to stay involved in shaping the future of Moodle long after this event. So, basically, that's our plan for today. Firstly, I'm going to talk to you through the key development themes that represent the Moodle product vision and that will drive Moodle's product development for the years to come. Second, I'm going to spell out some of the things I think you might not like, some of the limitations that our vision might imply. And then lastly, I'm going to leave you all with some real tangible tools that you can take away. That was the logistics. Before we get to our development themes though, I think it's really important that we start with this. It is our manifesto, and it is the document that we use to remind ourselves why we do what we do at Moodle. Um, and I realize there's quite a lot of stuff on this slide, um, so I'm going to take a minute to actually read it out loud because I want to make sure everybody at the back can read it or hear it properly uh, because this is so important. This is our why. This is why we do what we do. It's our purpose. It's our raison d'etre. So, here we go. Moodle is a platform that is dedicated to empowering educators, trainers and learners all around the world. Our goal is to create solutions that make learning accessible to everyone, regardless of their location or financial situation. We want to enable learners to receive personalized learning experiences with creative educational content, easily collaborate with teachers and peers globally, and achieve outstanding learning outcomes. Our aim is to cultivate a love for learning, fostering a community of lifelong learners who are equipped to succeed in our ever-changing world and active participants in making the world a better place. At Moodle, we envision a future where learning is truly a right, not a privilege, and where everyone has the opportunity to unlock their full potential. Some pretty deep in me. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. I did, I did think that deserved a clap. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but it's some pretty, pretty heavy, it's some real meaningful stuff. And I, I really invite you to keep it in mind as I walk you through the next few slides of this presentation. So, let's go. Let's start with development, number, de development theme number one, uh, which we have called Unlocking Creativity. 
Now to get us started on this one, I want to show you a couple of amazing Moodles. These Moodles were the winners and runner-up of our Show Your Moodle Love competition, which we ran a few months ago. So there's a chance some of you might have seen these before. The first few Moodles I will show you are creations by Dunja Spechner. Dunja is a teacher who works as part of the Bavarian State Ministry, uh, but yes, Bavarian State Ministry for Education and Culture. I hope I got that right. <laughs> and she creates courses for students in the K-12 sector. Dunja is an amazing educator. Um, she is passionate about what she teaches and about providing her students with engaging course content um, that really help them learn and not just learn some easy stuff, they, also, they learn some pretty complicated stuff. I mean, this is teaching them how to code in Python. I don't know how to Python. <laughs> it's really impressive, right? Um, now, I met with Dunja to prepare for this presentation, and she wanted me to make sure I explained that she is not a developer. Uh, she assures me that all of this is very, very easy to do in Moodle. She showed me how she creates these beautiful courses by simply leveraging the functionality that comes out of the box on her Moodle platform, uh, the one that's maintained by the Ministry of Education in Bavaria, it's called Mebis. And using that built-in functionality of Moodle, Dunja optimizes the standard course experience by simplifying the look and feel of her courses, using the tile format, hiding some headers that students don't need, and embedding interactive activities like H5P within the text and media section of her courses, she makes the scores courses cleaner and more intuitive to use. Anyone looking at Dunja's courses would say that they are best in class in terms of ease of use especially considering their aim for really, really young learners uh, and full of creativity, right? Beautiful, beautiful images that she draws all by herself, which is amazing. Now, I want to show you another course. Uh, this one is created by Stefan Schultz. Stefan works for a company called Be Decent, and he builds brilliant Moodle plugins as, as, as amongst many other things. Um, by the way, I have to stop here and say, I do realize two things. Number one, both of these people are from Germany, but they just happen to be our competition winner. I didn't, I didn't pick on them for that. Uh, and very much more importantly is both Stefan and Dunja are here today. Would you guys mind standing up and saying hello? And you guys need to give them a round of applause. <laughs> Um, so Stefan um, built these courses leveraging a, a theme that he's developed. It's called the Learning Maps theme. Uh, it's available for sale, I think, through Stefan's website now and hopefully very soon on the plugin database. <laughs> and um, he, it's a really beautiful course. It's super interactive. You just click through it. Um, as you do, put new activities pop up. You complete some um, different tasks. And as the course progresses, um, the course look and feel changes to demonstrate the progress to the learning. Anyone looking at Stefan's courses would say that they represent a really learning, a, a really modern learning experience um, that would engage the most discerning of learner. And they're also full of cre creativity. The problem with that though, and by the way, these two issues are nothing to do with Stefan and, and doing job and everything to do with Moodle HQ, is that there are some, some, some issues with it. Firstly, it's visibility. That's issue number one. And the second issue is access. So I'm going to talk to you about visibility first. Now, if you happen to know a Wiz plugin developer like Stefan, or even know that such a plugin exists, uh, or a phenomenal teacher like, um, I should say Frau Speckner, shouldn't I, to do it properly, <laughs> um, you know that Moodle can look and feel like this easy to use, intuitive, beautiful to look at. But if you don't know this, you won't. And the problem with that is that survey after survey, UX comes up as the number one people issue that people have with Moodle. Comments like it's a little clunky or it doesn't look very modern, pop up, survey after survey, review after review. If everyone in the world could see Moodles like look, that look like this one, we wouldn't have that problem, right? And it's a real problem. 
So the second issue is access. Um, so, you know, Mrs. Um, Mrs. Speckner or Junja is, is fortunate. Um, she creates Moodle courses on a platform that's invested in by the Bavarian Ministry of Education when they can afford to look after it and create a good platform with good plugins and good extensions. Um, and people who can engage people like Stefan are fortunate because they can, you know, invest in their Moodle to make it better. Uh, but those things are not available to the many. And I dare say they're not available to the most. And this is when our manifesto really comes into play. When we say that our goal is to create solutions that make learning accessible to everyone, regardless of their location, financial situation, or maybe even technical acumen or access to talent, we actually mean it. So we've been, that's why our first theme is about unlocking creativity. Uh, we want to make Moodle look and feel better and easier to use for everyone who uses Moodle. Um, so I'm showing you 3.11 now. We've been on this journey for a little while. 3.11, does anybody remember this? <laughs> Feels like a really long time ago, right? <laughs> uh, now this is 4.2, already a, a big improvement in the cleanliness and the usability and the um, design of our platform. Um, we're now, this is uh, Moodle uh, sneak peek for 4.3. Um, we've been doing the whole trying to fix the scroll of death thing. Well, one of the many ways we try. The activity cards are getting a little bit smaller. They've got more fle uh, flexibility, more ease of use functions are being built. And this is a, a little sneak peek at maybe 4.4, maybe 4.5, depends on how, we, how long it takes us to get there. Um, when we're starting to in include things like the possibility to have subsections in Moodle. So we really are evolving the look and feel of Moodle every time a version comes out. But it's a journey. There's lots to change and lots to fix, so it's going to take us a little while. So on our roadmap, these kinds of items, they show up like things like gradebook, quiz, assignment UX improvements. That's what those are ideas are all about, unlocking creativity. Uh, there are also um, things like the course creation improvements, which is a current idea on our roadmap. And things like developing course templates, which Michelle was kind of talking about earlier, um, are also there. And you know, I do want to say this isn't just about making Moodle look good, it's actually also making it easier to use. So those are you know, two big elements. And importantly, under this theme, we are going to continue to chip away at the tracker and address some of the niggling little things that people have been logging about Moodle for a really long time. We're just chipping away at them as much as we possibly can. We also plan to unlock creativity by launching a new course experience in Moodle, which will sit alongside our current course experience as an option for those who want it. This new course experience is going to be a lot like Chevron's courses. <laughs> They're going to be full page landscapes, so readily customizable via some drag and drop functionality, and the easy inclusion of graphical and interactive elements. This course experience will be aimed at really engaging the modern learner, uh, particularly in demand within sectors of the market that are in that non-typical educational sector or for non-typical educational content. Uh, and Moodle gets used a lot for that, uh, probably a lot more than people think. And then finally, under the theme of unlocking creativity, we want to help all teachers become more like Dunja. And uh, by diversifying cont content creation and making it easier for people to share and access content across the Moodle ecosystem. And on our roadmap, those kinds of things look like or come to life by a work in progress like the MoodleNet bi-directional integration, our investigations in AI-assisted content editing, and a holistic review of content management ac across Moodle products, which is a huge piece of work. I'm, I'm tired just thinking about it, and we're going to be kicking the re research off on it uh, very shortly. Okay, so that was the theme number one, unlocking creativity, designed to help, help us think about Moodle like a product, a packaged solution that is easy to use, beautiful to look at, and gets the job done well. Moving on to theme number two, which is facilitating collaboration. This is when we start thinking about Moodle like a platform. 
this is a platform. Looks exactly like Moodle, right? <laughs> it's a base that people can add on to and expand to add to its capability and change its looks and feel. It's the base by which people can create these amazing things. Like this is not AI, this is a real Lego thing. There's more than 250,000 Lego pieces in this thing and it's beautiful. But at the bottom, there's all the green things that I was just showing, that's all. Um, the thing is that this platform benefits uh, from a couple of things that Moodle doesn't have. First, it's that round, round hole and the little pin uh, which provide a standard way to connect pieces together. And then two is this suite of other standard pieces that you can just select from and add on to and know that they're going to fit together and stay like that over time. The way Moodle is built today, whenever something changes in Moodle core, all the customizations and plugins added to it and some of those external tools that we plug into it, they need to change. And that can cause some issues. Okay, in recent survey that we ran with both our community and certified partners, we found out that on average it takes people like this big slice of this pie right here uh, most people wait way longer than three months to upgrade to a newer version of Moodle. And that means that they delay having access to all of our new features and improvements and innovations. And the reason, the number one reason that they do that is because of the time and the complexity that there is in fixing plugins, customizations, themes and integrations every time we change something. And so people aren't getting the best out of Moodle because they, they're waiting because it takes so long to bring it all together. And we can do better than that. So under here in this roadmap, you're going to see our work on this issue come to life via ideas like the improvements to the LTI experience, which is coming in phase one, two and three. It's going to be a long one, that one. <laughs> and things like the web services modernization and then a ton more as well. Under facilitating collaboration, you will also see us um, thinking about how we can better support the development of plugins uh, via a concept of potentially a Moodle or a plugin marketplace. It's an idea that's been floating around for a while, but we actually finally have budget to explore that idea this year, which is a fantastic win for us. And also you'll see us bringing new collaborative features into the Moodle ecosystem um, like via integrations like our uh, soon to be released in 4.3 matrix messaging integration, which is coming out. So more of those kinds of things coming. So that was theme number two, facilitating collaboration, where Moodle evolves as an even better platform for us all to build great things together on. And so then finally we're at theme number three, optimizing outcomes, thinking about Moodle as a solution. And we're really aiming to optimize outcome for all of our key user groups, which are students or learners is the first one. Thing, and this is all about helping them achieve their learning goals, um, save them time, save them work, and providing them faster feedback and more targeted feedback and providing them access to support when they need it the most. Now, in this area, um, we believe that AI is going to play quite a, a significant role in here. But you'll notice I'm not going to talk about AI a lot, mostly because there's so many other talks about it at the conference. I don't need to repeat these things. But also those other talks are actually talking about how you can leverage the power of AI right now in the Moodle ecosystem. It's here. We, we've got it. Um, and how AI has started to transform the way learners engage with learning and what they have to learn. So I'm going to let all the other speakers uh, speak about AI, but I don't want you to think that it's not part of our roadmap and our thinking. It is definitely here. For educators, this is about helping them save time by making managing their work uh, and their courseware in particular easier to do and helping them provide more targeted support to the people that they are educating. So in this space, we have on our roadmap 
basic things like improving course management backup and rollover and exporting functionality in Moodle. Uh, we also have things like applying course level defaults uh, and other things like being able to manage certain tasks and within our activities in bulk. Um, and then we have some bigger things later still in the roadmap. Things like improving our notifications, looking at competency framework within Moodle. And, and this is true, by the way, Moodle LMS and Moodle Workplace. I don't want you guys to think I'm just talking about LMS. Um, and then enhancing our offerings in analytics as well. And then for administrators and developers of the Moodle platform, this is about creating a leaner platform for them, uh, for, it, for it to be easier to manage and maintain. We're going to put a lot of effort actually into this aspect, uh, particularly in the next um, year or so, with updates to our APIs for key functionality, the retirement of some old coding practices, improvements to our security framework, and upgrades to key toolkits like Bootstrap. This is the theme. Um, also, where a lot of work for workplaces. So, you know, saving organizations time and money is a key driver for that product. When they're deciding what's valuable for organization, that's a key one. Right, that's it. Those are the three development themes. Unlocking creativity, fostering collaboration, and optimizing outcomes. Now, I did say earlier that there were some things about this, vi this visions that you might not like. Time to, talk, time to talk about the hard stuff. So, firstly, we won't always be fast. Uh, if you've been working from, with Moodle for a while, you know that some of our code needs a little bit of a cleanup. Uh, and that means that as we continue to optimize our course experience and simplify and make our activities more intuitive, we're also going to be cleaning up those sections of codes that we're working on. What that means is it means refactoring and it means time and that means that you go a little bit slower. So if you're just looking at it on the surface, you're going to be like, well, hold on, it doesn't look like a lot strange. But trust me, underneath a whole bunch has changed because we're making things better underneath the hood. And it's really important that we do that. It's paramount for the health and su the sustainability of our product solution. The other thing is some of it is not very cool. I mean, let's face it, retiring old code and fixing APIs is not very sexy, is it? APIs have a fundamental problem. It's called the letter P. It makes them really, really uncool, right? <laughs> but modern APIs are essential parts of building a flexible and efficient software solution. Getting them right right now means that Moodle will be better placed to continue to adapt to the fast pace of innovation uh, and allow us to move faster in the future. And then the third issue is that this is going to be a lot of work. Uh, but on that point, I am hopeful because this is where all of you come in. We're going to get you guys to help if you want to. So you can help us deliver this vision. And this is where the bit I promised earlier about stuff that you can take away with you. So get ready. You might want to get your phones out, actually. We can do that. So on the screen, and I am going to put these back up during the Q&A, um, so don't like panic if you don't get them all. Um, but on the screen, we'll be showing a, couple, a few QR codes. So this QR code will, drive, uh, will take you to a drive, sorry, where we've stored two really important documents. The first is a detailed description of our Moodle product vision. Um, and it's like a, in a booklet form, so it's not exactly like these slides. It's actually all written, hands, you know, handwritten with long sentences, so that you can kind of read it and digest it in your own time. Now, I will say that document has a roadmap at the end of it. That roadmap's probably valid as of like two days ago. Roadmaps don't stay the same very long for very often. So there's also in the document a link to our live roadmap. So you can make, if you're looking at the roadmap, go and look at the live one so you've got the latest updates. 
All right, should I switch? Everybody's taking the photo? Okay. Because the second, sorry, I forgot. The second document is a full copy of our product playbook. So that's everything about how we, who we are in Moodle products and what our processes are that we use. So if you want to understand how we build product at Moodle and who the people are who do it, you can go through the Moodle, uh, Moodle playbook and then you can, you know, get involved in the process and be part of the team for as much or as long as you want to. The second QR code is a link to our Moodle Experience Lab. So it'll take you to a sign up page for the Moodle Experience Lab. By signing up to be part of the Moodle Experience Lab, you will join a bunch of other Moodlers who we call upon to do research, get feedback from, and invite to workshops where we ideate and co-create solutions. Um, and also test new ideas. So by being part of the Moodle Experience Lab, you can have a real hands-on impact on what future Moodles might look like and what they might feel like. So we'd love, love, love you all to sign up um, and so we can knock on your door and say, hey, do you want to test this little new design for the activity cards? We'd love your feedback. Um, and by being part of the Experience Lab, it will guarantee that we can do that with you. And then the third QR code will take you to a space on Moodle.org, which is all about the Moodle LMS Community Product Advisory Group. So this is a brand new initiative. Uh, we finally fondly called Product Advisory Groups PAGs for short, because or else it's a bit of a mouthful. Um, but if you go to this, we will ask you will be you will be able to say, "Hey, I'd like to be part of the Product Advisory Group, please." And now this is going to come a little later because at first we are going to do a period of embedding with members of the MUA, but in the near future we will be opening this product advisory group to anyone in our community who wants to have a say about the priorities of the Moodle roadmap and what ideas we should focus on next. Um, now I will give you a word of warning, if you will join the Moodle community um, PAG, you're going to have to put a bit of work in. It's probably two hours every couple of months, but there's actually some commitments from your part. We'd love to see you there. Um, and as many of you are there, the best we can, the, we will create a better priorities and a better roadmap for Moodle. So there we go, that's it. That's it, that is the Moodle product key development themes that are all about the Moodle product vision. Uh, it's a vision that is designed to empowering you whoever you are, whatever your circumstance or your level of technical acumen, to learn and to teach and to coach and to grow uh, th and thrive throughout the rest of your life. So thank you. We do have time a little bit for some Q&A. Um, I'm just going to give my team a warning. If the question's too hard, it's coming your way. <laughs> yeah. um, and I promise to put the QR codes back up. So here they are. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Marion, for your presentation. Hope it's not too hard questions. So otherwise, feel free to um, skip it. Um, I think it's there, there's been a small difference between one slide that Martin showed and one that you showed when you talked about your product. In Martin's, there were six, I think, and here there's five. And um, it's it's MoodleNet that's not on your on on your list. Maybe you could elaborate on that. I was I was quite happy not to see it in the hard news uh, here that MoodleNet is going to die because no. you emphasized yeah. that MoodleNet is the tool to uh, sharing. And uh, yeah, please could you elaborate? Absolutely, and I'm really happy you asked that because it is a really good point. What I was talking in there was the, the things that, like my function, my product functions and the, all of our teams, what we look after, MoodleNet is still very much alive uh, and it is absolutely evolving. I think version three came out a few months ago and we're moving to version four uh, soon. Um, but it's being led by young Martin over there. Um, so it's not in my remit <laughs> anymore, which is the only reason it wasn't on the slide. But it's a really great question. Thanks for asking it. I should have probably said that out loud, actually. Good one. Hi. Hi. Uh, you talk about modernize the API. Yes. Do we talk about uh, plugin as a service, modernize, uh, make more like microservices solution? that I can create content someone, someone else 
Not implemented inside Moodle? Yes. It's part of the long-term thinking for that, yes. And so I was kind of talking about the Moodle uh, plugin marketplace. So there's, you know, an extension of that marketplace could be more of a service level. But to do that, we've got to right, have the right web services structure. So yes, it's definitely in the thinking. Yeah. Thank you. First, yes, thank you for a very good talk of others have said, and uh, you failed if you were trying to annoy me. I'm not annoyed. I'm oh, very, great. very, <laughs> I think you have a very good vision of the future. But, and I'm afraid I don't want to make a question, I want to make a point. Um, in an open source world, I mean, your focus really is mainly on managing the Moodle HQ team, and you know, you employ them, well, you lead them as a servant you can set their priorities. Something we shouldn't overlook in an open source world is that even when Moodle HQ doesn't have the capacity, some things can happen which is great and doesn't do anyone else any harm. And the example that comes to my mind is like translations. Yeah. Moodle is translated into languages kind of, there is no commercial imperative to translate it into. Yeah. But people in that language need it. Moodle provides the infrastructure. And so it happens, mm. and that's just a great thing for the world and entirely aligned with Moodle's vision. So yes. that kind of thing that can really only happen in an open source world, yeah. uh, just a plea not to lose sight of that. No. no. And you've already said that in some of the support for plugin developers. You know, yeah. that, that Moodle as a platform is really important. It really is, and you're quite correct, Tim. And, so, and, and kind of a little bit about why I want to share this vision with people is to say, come and help us, like, come and, mm. come and play. Like, you know, we want you in this, um, this game um, and help us get to this vision that we're trying to drive. And you, people don't know how they can contribute unless they know where we're going. So by painting this picture, we can help with that. But then sometimes the contributions are, you know, completely outside of it. And it's also, they're also fantastic because there are things that we might have never imagined for ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Tim. Really kind.